Hello and welcome to Tech Time Live. My name is Jonathan Ott and I'm proud to be the digital marketing specialist for BEA. With me today are Jacob DiBattista and Rob Rivera, both technical service specialists at BEA. Today's topic will be the installation and setup of the LZR FlatScan 3DSW. BEA's LZR FlatScan 3DSW is a laser-based sensor system designed for automatic swing doors. In this Tech Time Live session, our techs will cover mounting and wiring, launching a teach-in, virtual push buttons, remote settings, and detection fields. Let's take it over to Rob and get things started. Hi, I'm Rob Rivera with BEA Technical. Um, I'm here with Jake D. Batista, the Jake D. Batista, and Jonathan Ott. He should also get a V before his name. Um, and we are going to do an actual install on a flat scan 3D to uh, show you how simplistic it is and some of the features it has and you know, give you an idea of how it would wire into a control. But first I wanna kind of show you what's in the box, what you could expect. We have a little goodie bag that has some of the uh, handicaps for the wire loom. We have a, a wire loom that comes with it. We have a pass-through cable. We have some of the little blocks for the bottom of the uh, center that, uh, of course, uh, this is ordered per door. So this would be one door, and you would get on the Flatscan 3D two modules. Uh, these can be ordered singular for a low energy door, but um, what we're talking about today is the full automatic uh, system, the safety system. So we get one right hand, one left hand. These are handed because of the swoop and the shape of it. Um, of course, those of you who've used our micro scan will be happy to know the cover is significantly easier to get off. It's still a little bit tight. Uh, you do get the harness. Uh, now you get two harnesses. As I mentioned, the pass through cable, and I have uh, one free here. This goes from sensor to sensor and is only used in the fully automatic system that goes uh, the flat scan 3D, one on each side of the door. So that's where you need that. This also does come with a standoff in case you have a panic bar because the the uh, number one curtain on the, the door, on the push side of the door, would go straight down. And if there's a panic bar feeding that, that they would uh, throw it off and learn. So this standoff comes in handy in that, that case. And of course, you get a little bit of screws. Um, I'm going to be using some different screws today, but that's because of my application. And one other thing I want to touch, touch on is the wire harness is a little bit different on this because it has the two gray wires. And I'll go up close on the wiring as we go along. But that is for the virtual push button that this Flatscan 3D offers. Unlike like some of our other sensors, this is the only one that does off that virtual push button. We'll also go in to a learn on that and show you how that functions and going deeper. So uh, let's get to the primary installation. For the sake of speed and time and simplicity, I'll show you that the flat scan 3D does not come currently with the backer plate. I'm going to use the backer plate for the simplicity and speed of installation. And also, it shows you a little bit better. The center has a placement of these three holes. So if you were to use the center, you would basically put screws of these three points through the center. <laughs> so once we remove our cover and I show you the placement of the three holes, you can see the uh, hole up here in the top, the one over here, and of course, the hole in the bottom that was aligned with it. So center with the backer plate is just like the, the flat scan SW. It, it can pop up on here. Because of the size of this, it's a little bit thinner, we, we don't need the plate. And you can see the actual screw head going in those exact places. So for simplicity, again, we're going to just use the backer plate. Also, you'll need to drill one approximately three eighths inch hole going through the door into the C minus is already drilled for simplicity sake again. At this point, if you had your sensors installed, you would need previous to putting your sensors on, obviously you'd have to drill your pass through hole. So let's say we have our pass through cable 
a three eighths inch hole. You simply run it through and voila. Now, once we have that, we have a, a position for the pass-through cable to come through very easily. Put it on the tip-up plate again for ease of installation. And then it's important to get this a clean, nice seated harness into your port. There are a couple of little guides that you should align. And there is also two different ports. The small black port is for the secondary side and the larger white port is for the primary side. Once we get our secondary side plugged in, time to do the primary side. Now, there are some special things that you need to pay attention to for the primary side. You're designating this the primary side by plugging this primary larger white uh, port in. And so it can be the primary side doesn't have to be the swing side, doesn't have to be the pro side. It could be one or the other, depending on how and where you plug that port in. Now, again, for speed, I'm just going to simply put this off to the side so you can see it while we're working on it. And I'll put this up here. At this point, we are not going to wire anything into the control. We're going to go to the other side of our door and put the secondary sensor on the swing on the pro side. On that. So now. Now that we've installed the, in this case, swing side, which is the primary side, we can just simply install the secondary side, which is going to be our pro side. Again, you would have your three screws put in. We have the backer plate. Let me give you an, a good view of the ports so you can get an, uh, a very good idea of how to plug it in. The top black colored port is for the secondary pass-through cable. The primary would be the, the white larger plug on the bottom. That is the primary side is obviously the other side. So we'll simply be following these little guides that are on the side and aligning them with the guides that are in the port. Make sure that we get good communication. It plugs in pretty simple. And then we give you adequate room here to put the cable, the excess cable, to the side. And we get a little pass through for the cabling. So when we put this, and there we go. This would be the secondary side. Now, we have covered before the dip switches, but we will Cover them again quickly here. Dip switch one is the dip switch that determines whether this is an approach side sensor. Down is for approach, up is for the swing. Now, that does two things. It tells the LED to turn green for approach for a reactivation circuit or red for a stall circuit. And it tells the, which wires are going to go to which relay. The blue and brown wires are going to be our swing side. The white and green wires are going to be the reactivation side. And so the white and green wires go to the, the side with that obviously is the approach with the green LED. And the blue and brown go to the stop side, swing side for the red LED. Uh, Dip switch two is going to be an environmental switch. Um, if you have conditions that the sensor doesn't seem to like, you could use dip switch two. On dip switch three, after dip switch two, on dip switch three, this is for background reference. This will turn off 
the ability of the sensor to use the background in any form for a reference, which can sometimes solve problems for you. So the thing, this switch for is for your pinch zone. And now one thing to note is if you wanted to utilize the uh, remote, the BEA remote, for changing the finger guard to zero instead of using the dip switch, and that can come in handy, you have to have dip switch four in the on position in order for it to communicate size changes or turning it off via the remote. So that dip switch must be on in order to do that. That's oftentimes very handy for a technician out in the field because instead of pulling the covers off, changing the dip switch, then having to do a relearn or play with the sensor, you just go with the remote and go unlock A000 and, and turn it off your collapse in the field down to nothing. You don't have to do a new relearn, you don't have to the covers off. It's very quick, very simple. So there's some benefits to that. Okay, so we are here now back on the primary side, which is the swing side. We have a record 8100. We have our harness, which I wanted to point out a little bit of the differences. Oops, wrong harness. As I mentioned before, a little bit of a difference. We do have the purple test wires, which for our application here, I have this adjusted to low energy operator. And I'm, I, it's not needed to have a monitoring circuit on an ANSI 15619 door. So for today, I'm not going to be using the monitoring wires. Now, we have the red and the black, which are for power. We're going to go to our power. We have the blue and the brown, which are for our swing side, just swing side. We have the white and the green, which are for our approach side. And we have these two grays, which I mentioned before, are for the virtual uh, push button. And we'll be demonstrating how to do a virtual push button and activate that and utilize that. Now, if you are using the virtual push button, you'll need to put that on an activation circuit, unlike the white and green, which is going to go to a reactivation circuit. Now, this record on one and two has an activation circuit. No, also, seven is an activation, seven and, and one, or seven and four. That's where I'll be putting these to demonstrate the virtual push button. The white and green, if you have an operator, older operator that does not have a reactivation circuit or secondary activation circuit, you can utilize the BR3X function 22 and a door switch. I have a couple of them on my door to tell when the door's in the closed position and, and it turns off the approach side sensor when the door is closed to comply with the ANSI standards of knowing act. And that's both ANSI 15619, low energy, no sensor can activate it, and ANSI 15610, no, when you have push buttons, no sensor can activate the door. So on this specific control that we're using today, the Record 8100, the swing side is terminal 10. The approach side is terminal 12, and 11 is the common for both of those. And as you can see, this is a normally closed circuit. You'll either have these factory jumpers like such, or you'll have your own jumpers in for it to function. So essentially, on any type of control where you have a normally closed circuit, you're going to have to adjust your relays. And that on the flat scan 3D is done only from the remote, which I will also go over. So for now, let's just wire this in. So our first wire, we're going to put our white, which is the common for the approach side, brown, which is the common for the swing side, and one of the grays, because the common on this operator is common to everything. So we'll put those all in turtle 11, which gives us all our commons terminated at one point. Okay, and now 
Our swing side is going to go to terminal 10. Our approach side is going to go into terminal 12. And again, this is the reactivation or secondary activation. Now, I prefer personally to wire my power to a different terminal. My gray will go to an activation circuit for my virtual push button. And uh, one of the activations on this particular operator is terminal seven. So I will wire it there. And now three and four. Power on terminal four. Let me get a little bit shorter. And now lastly, for zero world ground, for our power, I'm gonna share that on turbo three. You can see that our sensor is now powered up. I'm going to take these over here out of the way. Record is nice enough to design it with a pass through for cabling, for local cabling. I'll utilize that. And there we go. So we're in business. Okay, so just to reiterate, we have our dip switches on the swing side, all in the on position. This allows the LED to be red for the swing side. And I showed you already that we did the secondary side, which is the approach side, and set those appropriately. Okay, so once we get the sensor dark after pushing the hole in for three seconds, we're going to have to first set our relays before we do anything else. And since these are normally closed, we're going to hit the unlock button and we'll see a steady red blink. We're going to hit the relay button. And then for normally closed, normally closed, we're going to hit two for relay one, two for relay two, and one for the third relay. You'll see that it reacts to a slower speed because it accepted it. Now we're going to simply hit lock lock and we're ready to go. So now this is going to allow the door to open and close when we do conduct the learn. Okay, so what, now once you get your sensors all installed and you pushed it for three long seconds and put it into standby mode and you're ready to conduct the teach-in, you're going to simply push the button one time. It'll go red, green, red, green, warning you that it's about to conduct the teach-in. When it blinks green, it wants to see your hand vertically, approximately two inches larger than your door. So I'll do that. Until it sees it. Once it's blinking red, it's satisfied. And now, since I have the virtual button wires, the gray wires, attached to the activation circuit, it opened on its own for me. And now you can see once it's open, it blinks red on both sides and it's satisfied and it'll let the door close. And it closes and it blinks red for approximately 15 seconds after it's in a closed position to store all the information that it just learned. So now 
once it is completed, it's learned and gone dark. All we're going to do is cycle the door one time without interruption. Okay, so now we're good. You can actually put your hand in and see that it activates red because we're on the clean side. Now I'll open it, opens to 90, times out, closes, no activation. It's not seeing anything it shouldn't have. It learns to jam. It learns we created a virtual wall here with cardboard. Great little thing to have if you have a trash can or if you have pallets that they stack on the other side of the door so that sometimes the pallets are there, sometimes they're not, sometimes the trash piles up. The sensor would see those changes. If you put this virtual cardboard box, you know, wall here and do conduct a teach-in, it will not see any of those changing factors on the other side of the wall. Very beneficial. Now, we can activate it and see, turns red, stops the door. Great. Now it's gonna, because of the control is configured to stop and then close the door. Now we'll open the door, let it go full open. And now test the reactivation and you can see that that works. Now the, the benefit to the flat scan 3D is the, the four curtains and how that protects pedestrians that could be affected by that scare factor when the door starts closing and it scares them. This has so many curtains on it, the four curtains, that will cover the entire doorway that it is really a safe environment for the elderly or sick or injured people at hospitals or clinics. That type of traffic re really benefits from this type of center. Of course, as soon as we move out of the center, goes dark and lets it close. We've got the door swinging properly. We've got it adjusted where it opens and closes. It sees all the areas. One of the things I also wanted to point out is that if you notice, my floor is uneven. I have approximately a six inch curb on one side, on this swing side. If you look at the other side, the ground is flush on the outside. So this sensor can really be flexible with all those different types of flooring and floor differentials. Okay, in order to do a virtual teach-in for a virtual push button on the sensor, we are simply going to click the red button two times quickly. You'll get the red, blue, red, blue. This is telling us it's going to go into a learn. When it's green, put my hand in a location. When it turns red, it accepts that location. Green for the second spot, I'll put my foot in here, gives me a second spot, turns off, it's learned both locations. So it, a virtual button is that simple to where now when I put my hand in, if I'm red, you know, it's not gonna, even if I put my hand here and the virtual button activates, it, it's a safety, it's not gonna let the door come open to me. As soon as I clear out the center, it will let it open. So if, because we installed the virtual button in a location outside the swing of the door, we should be able to put my foot and it turns blue and sees it. Or we go up, put my hand up there. Now, one thing to point out, the virtual push button is a curtain that is coming from the sensor. So this is the location of it. Now when the sensor is over there, obviously this no longer works because it goes with the door. So that button is only good when the door is in the closed position. But the added bonus is once the door is activated, you don't really need that. You would walk in the pathway to hold open for you or close and reactivate. And of course the state wheels override everything and stop the door even if you do get a virtual push button as I showed before. And when I put my hand in a different location, it does not turn blue, only when I go to that location. Okay, so I wanted to show the approach side of the door to show you that it is attached to a secondary activation. When the sensor turns green and sees me or an object, 
it does not activate the door. I do have a receiver transmitter and I can activate the door while the door is in the swing. If it sees me, it will reactivate. However, once the door closes, because it is in a secondary activation on the operator, it closes, turns green, it does not open. I also wanted to show you that this flat scan 3D is capable of having a static field and being used off of a door for other applications. We've even used it for sliders. And the virtual button comes in especially handy. And there's some great benefits to using this in security or on sliders or some off door type applications. It's very easy to do a static field. Right now you can see the sensor is dark. I have this one set for static field. It does not swing. It would be for a security wall door, um, even a slider, as I mentioned. When you push your button, it's gonna go red, green, red, green, go into the learn that we talked about before. As soon as it goes green, I'm going to swipe my hand and go into certain area. And when it turns red, it's satisfied. Now, when it turns green the second time, I'm just gonna simply push the button one time. And that turns it off. And now what we have is a static field. You can see that right where I learned it, not outside of it, right on it. So I've defined the field. And if, again, if you had a spider, now because this one has four curtains, you can see I'm approximately three to four feet away from the wall and it sees me. So it gives me some depth that the flat scan might not give me. And it also has the adjustment where we can go in, unlock it, we can change our curtains with the arrows button. And I can go to say one curtain really quick. And now you, where it was seeing me about three feet away, and now I have to get right up to the wall and it sees me. So that's, a, a, again, a great benefit of flexibility on the sensor. Thank you everyone for watching this Tech Time Live. Today we went over the installation and setup of the LZR FlatScan 3DSW sensor. We covered mounting and wiring, launching a teach-in, virtual push buttons, remote settings, and detection fields. For more Tech Time Live videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash BEA sensors. Also be sure to visit our website at www.beasensors.com. Thank you for watching and have a great day.